This song on your heart of service, you'll see it is glad to be in the service. Okay. Amen. I'm glad. Amen. I think I am really glad. I thank the Lord. Every time I see something, I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I'm having an opportunity to be in the So if you don't mind, stand with me. Let's lift up the Lord in this song. He says, I'm glad to be in the service. To be in the service. One more time. So if that's you, sing it with me. Glad to be in the service. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it with me. Because truly we are living in some times in our society that has never been seen before. Amen. We are living in a technological era whereby God is being replaced with tangible things. Amen. 
people think God is in the automobile. They think that God is in the house. He's in the money or the finance. They think God is in the looks. So they replace these things with the true and living God and live life thinking that everything is all right. But as the body of Jesus Christ, we must always be reminded that God has sent out his word to warn us and to teach us to let us be in the know. The word of God said in these last days, this, people are going to be confused. They're not going to know what's right or what's wrong. Amen. And when it gets like that, that's pretty bad. Amen. Well, it's like that already, church. Amen. I'm going to share briefly with us a word here. We're going to look in the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew's, amen. I'll be reading briefly here from the King James Version. And I want to say that I thank God for Brother Marsh opening up in devotional scripture this morning, coming out of that first chapter, book of John, first John, amen, fifth chapter. Uh, the text that he read, amen, really sums up what I studied today. Amen. So I know that God has a connection going on already before the service even gets started. Amen. Amen. But now we can have fellowship with the connection that's already going on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Matthew's 11th chapter, amen. The 11th chapter of the book of Matthew's, just pretty briefly, a few scriptures. Can you find it? Say, amen. Amen. 11th chapter, verse number 25. Those who can stand, let us stand for the reading of the word of God, if you don't mind. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Amen. A text read, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because Thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babies. Even so far, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man know the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save or except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Let us pray. God, thank you for your word right now, dear Lord. We just ask, God, that you would expound it unto your people today. We thank you, Lord. We look forward, Father, having fellowship with you, this place, one with another. Teach us today, God. But we don't know the way unless you show it to us. We don't have the understanding unless you give that to us. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. You know, I've been, I've been looking to see what God would do, and he did what he wanted to do. In other words, what I'm saying is sometimes we study and prepare for a sermon, and just when you think you, you got it all together, God begins to open your understanding up and give you what he wants to say. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I thank him for that. <coughs> I have another sermon prepared. God, God always do me like that, and I don't mind because it lets me know that God is in control. Amen. 
Amen. As a pastor, and I've been pastoring in ministry since 1974, and I still get butterflies or become cautious when I handle God's word before his people. Because I realize that this is real. And I don't take this for granted. See, you have to have your life in Christ. Whatever God has done for you is a personal thing. And no one can tell you how God will act with you because you and God react and act together. So when God do something for you, you can't say, well, let me tell you what God will do for you. Yeah, they don't operate like that all the time. God will deal with each one of his children as individuals. Amen. Because we all have different problems different situations going on in our lives that need to be met. And God meets us with our own individual circumstances. And you know, a lot of people, many of us, or many people live in what I call self-made worlds. Self-made worlds. Self-made worlds is worlds where people live by their own rules. They make them up as they go along, or they'll put them out there before, and then they'll stand on them. And that's self-made, and that's their world that they live in. Amen. And then when you live in a self-made world, God is not sovereign. In other words, God is, they, they limit God to his relationship. But in a self-made world, God is not in control of everything. They, they, they have their own rule. In the self-made world, some people believe that God is not uh, going to be over every race. Amen. Some folks think that in the self-made world. They, they say, uh, uh, God, didn't, God didn't save your kind. They live in that mindset. They live in that world. Not, it doesn't just have to be with race, it could be in culture. It could be in gender. It could be also in, in, in the, the lifestyles. And people make self-made worlds and they say, well now God ain't gonna work with you or deal with you because of this or that. And, and you know, some people even have a, a picture of their God on the wall. Yeah. And, and it's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. they, they Perhaps their great great grandmother had it, passed it down to the other one. So it becomes a, fair, a family heirloom that, that that picture represents their self made world and the God whom they serve. Right. And they live by that standard. And you can't tell them otherwise. They live by that standard. But I'm here to tell us that God is not in a frame for your eyes only. God is not limited in this world. For God is the creator of this world and of all mankind. But people, and I'm not talking about unsaved, I'm talking about people, tend to choose to keep God where they want him at, in the lives, in their self-made world. I'm not going to be before you long today. I, I want to share a story with you. And then we're going to, we're going to leave, we're going to go home. You know, there was a lady, she died. She got to the pearly gates. When the gates swung open, there stood two beautiful angels. 
on both sides. And there was a small frame, curly man, curly haired man, a man, there with them. He opened the gate. And the woman was so excited. She said, oh my Lord, St. Peter, how marvelous God is to have you meet me at these pearly gates. All right. As he began to speak, she cut him off and said, I'm not here to see my mama. She said, oh, I lost my husband some years ago, too, and I, I'm not here to see him. And she said, you know, that preacher that was at my church, I heard that he just passed uh, about a month ago, and I I'm not here to see him. He may be here, that's what she said. She said, but Peter, I'm here. I'm not here to see any of them. I'm here to see Jesus. Yeah, all right. That's what she said. All right, all right, all right. All right. And as he led her to the throne of God, there God sat. And the 12 and the 24 elders right. sat there also at the table. Uh -huh. They were seated at the table. But next to God was an empty seat All right. at his right hand. Come on. Come on. And she stared in awe to the empty seat. And said, oh my God, God, I'm here to see Jesus. I've had his picture on my wall all my life. But I don't see him here. And the Bible, she says, says that he is seated at the right hand of God. That's what she told God. God stood up and the host cried out, glory to the Lamb of God. The woman was so busy trying to uh, 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 spot Jesus, she didn't notice why God stood. And as Jesus entered the throne room with her, the heavenly host shouted, Hallelujah, amen. All right. She turned, but she saw only the one who opened the gate. And she said, St. Peter. Then Peter stood up at one of the tables. And Peter said, all glory to God. And she turned back to the person who had opened the gate. And she said, if Peter, if he's Peter, uh -huh. then, then, then who are you? Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and he took her hand and said, no one enters the kingdom of heaven except through the Son. That's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. And then he placed her hand on the nail prince All right. in his hand. So this evening, you can look at your neighbor, you can look at the person sitting in front of behind you, you can say, you can't know God if you don't know Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can't know God if you don't know Jesus. Right. I, I feel my help on right now. God, help on, help on. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. I feel my help right now. So, so for a brief moment, I, I just want to introduce you to Jesus. Come on, man. Come on. Amen, 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 amen. See, some people think they know him because of the history that they've heard about the mother. Come on, man. Some people think they know him because they may have that picture on their wall. All right. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Some people think they know him because they may have been in a position Come on. in the church house. Yes. Uh-huh. Some people think they know God. You can't know God if you don't know Jesus. Right. Amen. Listen, we all must have a personal right. relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. Just to 
know God. Right. I, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here today. See, 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 some people will go by the old wise fable. Or they'll go by some word that's been twisted up and think they know God. Oh, I'm here to tell the church today. God is always wrapped up in Jesus. Oh, I know I'm right about it. When, 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 when I looked down in my Bible and, and, and I was reading over in the book of John, in the book of St. John, amen, you don't have to turn there, I'm going to read this. In the book of St. John, Jesus went before God and he prayed for them who knew him. Yes, he did. And he said there in the, ninth, in the 17th chapter, he said, he said, Father, Oh, yes, he's talking to God. They, they, he said, I, I neither pray for them alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the disciples' word. Right. Uh -huh, that they may all be one as thou art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one right. in us. Oh, you, you can't know God if you don't know Jesus. All listen, right. listen, listen, listen. He said this here. And the glory which thou gave to me, even as we are one, and I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I will, he says, Father, that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. And this is the last part he said. I have declared unto them your name, and I will declare it, and the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. I can't know God if I don't know Jesus. I must have a personal relationship, first of all, with Jesus Christ. There's no sense in me thinking that heaven is prepared for me because I went to church every Sunday. Don't believe that heaven is prepared because I say the Lord's prayer often. Oh, no, 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 listen, listen. Oh, heaven is prepared for those who are in Jesus and Jesus is in them. Right. God is a person who does not deal with side artists. Right. Oh, side, what's a side artist, Pastor? A side artist, if you go and buy you some ticket, you, they offer you a side. All right. Well, some people will go off in there and they just want the side. Yeah. Come on. God don't deal in side artists. When God comes to you as God, he's coming to you in full. Everything that you desire in Jesus is in the Father. Right. Everything you desire in the Father is in the Son. Come on, come on. You can't know God without knowing Jesus. And this is why I find that the devil and the enemy has tricked a lot of people's mind when they go around saying that we all worship the same God. Well, I beg to differ. Uh, I beg to tell them they better watch themselves because if you don't know Jesus, you don't know God. And see, you can't go around and say that I know God.